Hey everybody, this week let's take a look at some octave pedals you can build at home. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before I get started, I just want to remind everybody to hit that subscribe button down below and make sure to also tap that bell icon to make sure you're notified of all my latest content. So this week I wanted to talk about octave pedals. Um, octave pedals come in a couple of different varieties. You know, you have your sub octaves and your octave ups. And I just wanted to talk about some of these pedals that I've built that you can also build at home. I wanted to go over the effect, how it works, and what's different between different types of octave ups and octave ups and octave downs. So I have three octave pedals here. One is a clone of the MXR Blue Box. This is probably the most popular or well-known sub octave pedal out there. I also have two octave up pedals. One is the Tycho Bray Octavia and one is the Roger Mayer Octavia. Now all three of these pedals are pretty much straight up clones. The only one that I'll say I made a little change to is on the Tycho Bray Octavia. Um, I've added a switch here to turn the octave effect on and off. They all produce fuzz as well. So you get that added benefit of fuzz with your octave. So the first question you probably have is what is an octave effect doing to my input signal? Well, the octave effect essentially tries to increase or decrease the frequency band of your input signal by a given factor. If it increases it by a factor of two or doubles it, you're going to get one octave up. If it decreases it by two or halves it, you're going to essentially get one octave down. So an octave down is a sub octave. An octave up is obviously an octave up. Now that we know what an octave pedal is trying to do, let's look at how we do that with analog electronics for both an octave up pedal and a sub octave pedal. Starting with octave up, doubling the input frequency band is usually completed with a full wave rectifier. If you're not familiar with a full wave rectifier, I would suggest maybe go take a look on Wikipedia. I'm just going to quickly go over the logistics of it with maybe a few graphs. So what full wave rectification is, is it essentially ensures that your output signal is always going to be positive whether or not your input signal goes negative or stays positive. The best way to explain that is with a sinusoid. So if I have a sinusoid that starts at zero, goes up to value x, then goes down past zero to value minus x, and then back up to zero and on, and if that's my input signal, my full wave rectifier is actually going to mirror that negative portion up to the positive portion. Now what that does is it essentially doubles the frequency of your signal. So you get a frequency doubler via full wave rectification. Now a couple things to note with this type of full wave rectification used for frequency doubling is, you know, we had that nice sinusoidal input, but at the output we're going to get those choppy peaks at the bottom. Well, we're kind of in luck here because this is also coupled with a fuzz pedal. So those frequency peaks are just going to add distortion and it's just going to add to the overall fuzz effect. So we don't need to worry about them here. The Tycho Bray Octavia is a two stage pedal. The first stage is a fuzz stage, which you know, you can control by this boost knob here. It's essentially all done with transistors. And the second stage is going to be the stage that provides you that full wave rectification or frequency doubling. The full wave rectification is completed by a center tapped audio transformer. So I have the board here and here's my audio transformer. That coupled with a couple of rectifier diodes are going to give you a fixed doubling of frequency. So you can't adjust the frequency or the octave at all. You're, you're kind of set there, but that's how the Octavia works. The Roger Mayer Octavia works very similar to the Tycho Bray Octavia. You have your two stages. So again, you have a knob for fuzz, which is in that first stage, transistor-based fuzz circuit. The second stage though, instead of using that center tapped audio transformer to provide full wave rectification, we're just going to use a simple transistor with the outputs being on the collector and emitter mixed together through some rectifier diodes. So because the emitter and collector outputs are going to be out of phase, coupling that with a couple of rectifier diodes is going to ensure that we get an output that's always positive. And again, this is going to have a fixed octave of one octave up. So now for sub octave pedals. Sub octave pedals have to divide that input frequency band, band by either a factor of two or four, etc., to get you one octave, two octave downs, etc. Uh, this is usually done by some sampling and the use of flip-flops to divide your signal. 
And in the case of the MXR Blue Box, that's exactly what's going on. The MXR Blue Box has two controls, so level and blend. Um, the level is just a straight volume level, so we actually can't control the fuzz like you can in the octave ups I just showed. The blend is actually where we can get a little bit more control over our octaves that we didn't have in those octave up pedals I just showed. So I don't want to go too much into the schematic for the MXR Blue Box, but I do want to tell you how it works. Um, you have a few different stages in here. Uh, one stage is an op amp stage. It's actually the first stage. High gain, that's where you're going to get most of your fuzz from. And then you have a stage with flip-flops where that signal outputted from the high gain op amp stage is going to be divided by four. So the frequency band is going to be divided by four. At the end, what you do is you get a blend or a mixing stage between your original signal with the gain added on and that secondary signal which has had the frequency band divided by four with that gain added on. So this blend knob here is actually just allowing you to go between a zero octave shift and then blend in some of that one quarter or two sub octave shift. Um, you don't actually get anywhere in there that's you know just one octave down, you're just getting either either ends of the spectrum zero octave or two octaves down or a mix of the two in between. Um, that is one thing to note about this MXR Blue Box. You know, on the other um, octave pedals that I looked at, you could control the fuzz, but you couldn't control the, you know, octaves. Here, you can't control the fuzz. That gain stage is fixed, but you can have some control over your octaves. So hopefully you guys found that informative. I'm gonna try to put, you know, pictures up here so, you know, they'll tell a thousand words and maybe explain it a little bit better than I can. Um, I think we're at the point now where I can give you some sounds and maybe show you the difference between the two octave ups and obviously the octaves up and the sub octave. So with that, let's just get to it.
hopefully you guys enjoyed those demos of the octave up and octave down pedals. Hopefully you were able to hear some differences as well. I'm glad you were able to stay with me as my veiled attempts to explain octave up and octave downs maybe weren't the greatest. You know, it's kind of hard to do when you don't have a lot of visual markers, but hopefully I got my point across. Essentially, I just wanted to show you guys that you can build these at home. They're fun pedals to have. Probably not something that's going to be on your board all the time, but you know, for a cool solo or something like that, they do provide a different sound. So with that, I want to leave it here for this week. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.